is not a question of what things are. It is a question of how I learn. It is a question of when I can say something. And as we become confident of that, we, we stop being these outside observers, we, we stop being these controllers, and we start swimming in something which floats. So these conferences and meetings like this, each time regurgitate stuff, and next time, the next conference it will be possible to say different things. There is always the idea of radical change. The radical change takes place in the mind. is that we're still in the Shannon information age, which imprisons us in the past, because Shannon messaging means that you're going to send me something that I can already expect, and all I have to do is figure out, did you mean this or that, that or that or that or that or that or that, but the Shannon model doesn't allow me to understand how I can know something new, and because all of the technology we're making is based on the Shannon model, messages that are expected we are essentially screwing ourselves. So I envision a new kind of technology, a technology which helps us reach insights, not which helps us send messages. Sing it. The key for cybernetics is not the definition, it's about the vision for a different world. The late Amos Wilson said, if we desire a better world, we must name the world we desire. Desires. I've been thinking that perhaps we should reflect on the nature of our problem. Problems are always conflicts of desires. So there is an undesirable present. How can what let present transform itself into a more desirable? Desires. So if people don't know yet what to write in the desire assignment, they should simply sit down and think a moment what they want change, and then make a statement as if the change took place. Needs are conditions that have to be met so that they can happen again. There are one description of life. One, not the only one, but one description of life is that needs be met so that they happen again. If I could have sorted into the table of content the title needs. It would give us a different English language. We would understand, for instance, that we need peace. And since we need peace, we have to meet it with our conflicts. We have to meet it with our differences. Because we can only argue with each other when, when, when we are That is what I want. Every eye not only needs peace, but wants peace. So asynchronicity is an invitation for generating newness through conversations that turns objects into rhythms. Provocative conversations. Provocative conversations, provocative conversations. I claim that the biology of love is central because I claim that love is the emotion that constitutes the social. There is a fundamental difference in the course of human relations depending on the emotion under which it takes place. If it is love, it is the behavior, the action that constitutes the other as a legitimate other, inconsistent with itself. And the explanation of that phenomenon has to do with the possible history of recurrent interactions under which these systems drift together in coexistence if they enter in recurrent interaction without destroying each other. Now the beauty of it is that living systems are such that you can do this practically with all of them in the domains in which they exist, of course. If I want to live in relations that bring forth the legitimization of another in coexistence with myself, and want and need an honest language 
then maybe the biology of love is an emotion that will invite a new, honest language. We learn more about each other, you and I, and I of you. We learn how we not only agree about the nature of a couple of somewhat different oriented video cameras, but we also learn how we disagree. And in so doing, we learn about each other. People listen for understanding rather than agreement. So conflict is an invitation to turn. If you take together. each end carefully, and I'll get out of the way. Oh. Mm. Where did that come How from? How would you undo that? How would I undo it? Yeah. Oh. I would take a, I'd take a scissors and I would go... Other than that, without cutting it. Well, let's see. If she hands it back to me, it might get undone. It did. Brilliant. Brilliant. So we can exchange back and forth. We can so have a conversation much. where we exchange exactly. noddingness. You deal with the knot yeah, and through the conversation yeah, yeah. and going back and forth uh -huh. through conversation, the knot disappears. Maybe we're not doing uh, theory, but we're doing improv theater here, now. Maybe even some of us are not doing improv, but actually doing and acting based on the concepts of how the metaphors of cybernetics has affected my life and are performing daily life. Hopefully, in a way that might transform a conversation. Performance. Sharing your presence. Sharing your presence. Not the content, not the form, not the opinion. Just, I'm here. Sometimes it's done by looking at somebody. Conveying your thought and your attention. Not only one. Lou, thank you. Carrying your messages so that they reach out the way you want. Just one more question for now. I'm learning that I'm doing really cybernetic work. Now it makes sense, resonate, but... And then I think about it, oh, how does one work in cybernetic? Because the conference theme is uh, living in cybernetics, but I think it should be cybernetic. I mean, living is cybernetic. <laughs>